cute. Yep. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, if you're not doing anything Memorial Day weekend, you're probably on the couch watching wrestling because we have Double or Nothing by AEW, WWE, Night of Champions, NXT, Battleground, all in the same weekend. It is a three-show preview show this week. Oh, yeah, and AEW is clearly doing Monday Nitro on Saturdays now. So sit back, relax, and save some room for us, LeBron James, because you're on the couch, too. It is Kings of the Rings podcast. Podcast episode 341, Night of Collisions or Nothing, exclusively on Wrestle Attic Radio, and it starts right now. Yeah, my Celtics aren't too far behind. They're getting good. They're gonna get there. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm so happy LeBron got kicked out yet again. It was freaking great. Did he get swept? Yes, they did get swept. Boy. He got blocked on the final shot of the game, too. Oh, <laughs> oh ouch. Yeah, and he walked out and didn't shake anybody's hand, little bitch. Ladies and, oh, what a pussy. Ladies and gentlemen, what a pussy. <laughs> welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast. This is a LeBron-hating podcast. Um, here on Wrestle Out Radio, episode 341. I, of course, am your host, uh, King Ricky Rose. No, K Murphy K unfortunately, uh, is stuck at work, and so hopefully K uh, gets out of work soon. But we have a lot to talk about uh, this week. Like I said, three... Three view show. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. This is a three view show. I probably should have named it that. It's the three view show. Uh, Double or nothing. Night of Champions. NXT Battleground. All this Memorial Day weekend. It's almost like wrestling planned it because we all have off for at least three days. Uh, but before we get into any and all of that, uh, we have Will T, who is wearing that really, really ridiculous hat. Will, how are you? I think wrestling threesome would have worked too. Ooh, I would. So, oh, uh, I would have got. A, I might have got us some views. Yeah. So yeah. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask the chat room out there. Who is your wrestling threesome? You can take that however you want, you want it. it. I wish. I wish K Murphy was here to answer because their answer would probably scare the fuck out of probably. me. Probably. But my name is Will Tarish, like Tisa Thomas, A R A S H U K, the professional podcaster, and yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun talking about some wrestling for a few hours. Yeah, we we we've, we've got a crap ton of wrestling. Uh, to, ECW to might come up. I love talking about ECW. Yeah, ECW might come up. Yeah, if you want to check that out. So Willie T and K were on um, the April bump, which actually comes out r- comes out the same today. day. Yeah, that we have recording this, so it came out. All right, so check out the April bump podcast and listen to talk about what ECW thing did you guys cover? Uh, 1996, Devon debuted. That's all I need to know. It's like oh, wow. uh, it was a like massacre in Queens Boulevard or something. I believe it was that was April it. 1996. Yeah. yeah. No. It was great. Yeah. Devon had a not safe for work <laughs> debut. I bet he, he did. said, fuck a lot. That sounds like that's <laughs> that's very 96 ECW. Oh, it was the best. I got to do it. I got I got to I got to Oogle over Shane Douglas for like eight minutes. I bet you amazing. did. I bet you did. Uh, Kyle's covering on WrestleMania soon, so be on the lookout for that. It's, Kyle's pretty excellent. We're getting we're getting Wheeler Uta everywhere on Wrestle Attic Radio. And I didn't call him Nick once, I promise. <laughs> well, that's good. So let's let, before we get into that, like I said, we have three shows that will go over: Night of Champions, uh, AEW Double or Nothing, as well as NXT Battleground. So again, three view a threesome show. It's going to be a really really big show. We're really just going to talk about previews. Um, from here on out, before but before that, uh, we have a little bit of a collision, so don't be fooled, folks. Yes, that is a brand new logo. Yes, it also looks like WCW Monday Night Show, but it's not. It's AEW's new logo for their Saturday Night Show called AEW Saturday Collision, because the thing that they wanted to do above all things was bring back wrestling on Saturday prime time which to be honest with you at this part of the year besides i don't know the nba finals which will probably be should be over around that time they're really only competing with baseball uh so it is going to be saturday june 17th i'm going to pull up um right now their freaking press release about it uh which is a which is a very interesting press release because it's totally a tony khan uh jerk face 
uh, jerk off to it. Uh, but let's find, let's figure out what exactly he said. I know you can't see it on the screen, but it is there just in case. Oh, I can read that. Yeah, I, I can read every word. I bet you can. I bet you can. <laughs> Um, let me pull it up <laughs> real quick, and I'll read it for you right here. Oh, son of a biscuit. All right, hold on. First line is, we know it looks like nitro. Shut up. <laughs> That's exactly Second line, did you know it looks like nitro? It's cool, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And here, I'm going to pull it up right now. Okay. So, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, okay. So, it says here. TNT launches a second night of wrestling. It's actually like their fourth night of wrestling. TNT launches a second night of wrestling with AEW Collision, featuring headliners Thunder Rosa, Miro, Samoa Joe, you know that guy who's also on Ring of Honor, Powerhouse Hobbs, and <laughs> Andrade <laughs> El Idolo on Saturday, June 17th. Press release coming out of New York on May 17, 2023. TNT launches a second night of pro wrestling with a new tentpole series, AEW Collision, on Saturday, June 17th. It was announced today by Kathleen Finch, chairman and chief content officer of U.S. network group Warner Brothers Discovery during the company's 2023 upfront presentation at, at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Oh, what's happened in New York? Uh, this live... Two-hour in-ring show will air every Saturday night from 8 to 10 p.m. and feature more wrestlers, more stories, more action to super serve fans. AEW Collision will feature headliners including Miro, Samoa Joe, Thunder Rosa, which who, by the way, did anybody else know Thunder Rosa was still on the roster? Because I didn't. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs and Andrade El Idolo. They go on to say, in only four years following the launch of Dynamite, AEW's footprint has more than doubled across TNT and TBS because you keep on adding fucking shows. <laughs> Along with AEW Dynamite, Friday night's AEW Rantes, the recent follow doc, AEW All Access, which is going to be exclusive to Max now, and now AEW Collision, TNT and TBS deliver the best matches and the most entertaining moments in pro wrestling today. AEW has reached a total of 23 million viewers so far this year across all of its shows on TBS. Yes, and TNT. Uh, they go on to say that we're doubling down on wrestling with AEW Collision, which gives fans two more hours every week, said Jason Sarlanis, president of Turner Networks, ID, and HLN, Linear and Streaming. AEW's roster of talent has expanded so quickly because Tony can't stop fucking signing people um, that we felt it needed another night to bring our audience the epic robberies, unforgettable matches, and stars they love to watch. Adding Collision to our programming mix on TNT will allow us to satisfy the massive demand we felt from our hard core fan base and be the ultimate compliment to AEW Dynamite on TBS. With the addition of AEW Collision on TNT, I'm extremely proud that a Turner Network uh, will be the home of a Saturday Night Wrestling for the first time in more than two decades, said Tony Khan, who clearly grew up watching Turner, uh, CEO, GM, and head of creative of AEW, because he had to let that be known. Um, the debut of Collision is significant across numerous sectors, including television, wrestling, entertainment, and sports, and reinforces AEW as the bold property we envisioned when we launched in 2019. Collision will deliver live every Saturday night more of what fans and viewers tell us they want, athletic big personalities, exciting storylines, and hard-hitting wrestling action, all of which have become synonymous with AEW. And that is the end of the press release. That's a lot to take in, man. <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts, Will? You know, I mean, good luck to them, man. I mean, a lot of their headliners that they bragged on that front page – of people they didn't use, they haven't used. Miro's been on TV in like a year. Andrade has been on TV since he got married, or since he beat up, since he matched with Ric Flair. Uh, Thunder Rose has been on TV since God since knows their how last long. big Hobbs. event, which is in the fall. Full gear since, yeah, since before so, full gear. Yeah, I mean, good luck, man. Good luck. There's there is such a thing called stretching yourself too thin. Uh, this is something I had to learn the hard way and trying yeah. to figure out. Um, when running a business and doing podcasting and shit, the further you spread out, the harder it is to do, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes you just got to focus on one thing, and I wish him the best. I hope yeah. it's successful. I'm not going to watch it. I, I'm, I'm doing things on Saturday nights. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah, when you think about their, when Bad you think nights, about anyway. their... Like, who is this for? Who's the their target old, the audience? The older people. Because, like, their, their target audience, they always laud, especially Jericho, but demo god, that, like, 18 to 35, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's usually the target audience they go for. But, like, 18 to 30-year-olds, 30, 30 to 35 is always up in the air, depending on your situation. 
They're not home at 8 to 10 on Saturdays. I never was. If not, it was a shit night yeah. for me. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Like, I don't know who they're going for. Like, I understand there is a lot of older people, like I'm saying, like above 35, that grew up on Saturday Night Wrestling, and that's cool and all. If you're targeting them, that might work, but your core audience that they always like to load about, that 18 to 35 demographic, they're not going to watch this live. Well, that's actually a question Ari's, Ari's kind of wondered. Why are they the target demo? Like, they know, because that's millennials mm-hmm. and, like, early Gen Z. They know we're all broke, Yeah, I don't, I don't, right? I'm, I don't like, have Why do advertisers give a fuck about people our age? Yeah. We're broke. I mean, honestly, Tony might be right. Target people in their 50s because they have all yeah. the money. So have fun with have fun with your big pharma ads while watching Dynamite <laughs> or Collision, whatever the it's fuck it's called collusion. nowadays. It's gonna be a bunch of boner pills and four trucks. Pretty much, uh, they, they've already named some places for where Collision is going to be, except for the debut location, which is supposed to be happening tonight on this recording because Dynamite is on right Chicago. now. But everybody knows it's fucking Chicago. <laughs> um, one of those places is going to be in your backyard. Well, it's going to be at the Rock in New Jersey. <laughs> on a Saturday night. Um, they're also going to be in, uh, I think, Toronto as well. Uh, a couple spots in Canada. So it, it is a development thing. I feel like they just wanted something on TNT since they pretty much got booted um, from primetime TNT during the week. Because they were like, oh, yeah, no, NBA and NHL. <laughs> and they're like, we'll go to TBS. And I really think they just wanted something on TNT. Which, which is okay, yeah. cool, whatever. But I... I hope it does well. I hope, I mean, I I think I've kind of talked about it before another place. And here's kind of one of the opening graphics of it, which included, which I mean, the people they included on their thing. If you look at this opening graphic, you have, you clearly have Samoa Joe at the top, Thunder Rosa at the top center, and Powerhouse up top right. But your biggest face is on here. Miro's there. Miro's hidden a little bit. Your biggest face is on this promo thing. Don't even include your fucking world champion, MJF, who is front and center, along with Orange Cassidy, the international champion, who is also front and center. Like, why aren't they in the press release? Uh... I don't know. Maybe it's just a given, a given, or a little too. Obvious. I don't know. I mean, is there anything given with this? Because we don't even know. Like, it's going to be two hours of program, and so it's going to be a ten pole. Uh, so it's going to be like a major program on top of the minor programs. So remember, folks, you have two hours of dynamite currently. Two hours of dynamite. You're going to get two hours of collision. You're going to get an hour of rampage. Five right there, and I then you have dark and dark elevation. Can- I thought they're canceling ramp. I thought they were canceling they, rampage. I have not heard of them canceling rampage. They should cancel rampage. Um, I'm not sure if they are going to, but I feel like they should. Like they for for if you're gonna have collision, then there's or or is or is dark and elevation no longer a thing? One of them, I think one of those three are a thing. I could be wrong. I you got to get rid of these one hour shows, and I think the first things you got to get rid of is dark and dark elevation. Yeah, rampage rampage is the Sunday night heat of AEW. Yeah, <laughs> like. And they can do so much. They can rampage shouldn't have been a thing, I don't think. Well, I'm pretty sure it was the compromise because they didn't want to do a. Th- they want a. T- they wanted uh, a third Turner, hour, right? Want a third hour dynamite, and Tony was just like, "No, how about a new show?" And that was a compromise, <laughs> which I still think that was the right decision at the end. At the end of the day, yeah. Because uh, I think a third hour dynamite would have been like, "Oh my god, I want to kill myself." So Fretz will name it. Fretz is reporting that Dark and Elevation are both on hiatus or canceled, which means they're probably canceled. All right, so they're keeping Rampage. Yeah. That's fine. That's they're keeping fine. Rampage. Um, no, I, I get it, but like I, I, I get they're not wanting to do a third hour, but when you have a roster size as big as AEW's, you got to give them something. Like that one hour Rampage was not cutting it. It's just like, wow, dude, Warner Brothers really doesn't give a fuck about Ring of Honor. <laughs> they're just yeah. like... Why that did too. you buy this? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's it's very concerning. Like, you bought Ring of Honor, you made a big whoop about Ring of Honor. And it doesn't have any of your TV slots? They couldn't get one. That's not Tony's fault. Well, it is his fault. It, is, he didn't, it is kind of Tony's fault. He didn't, he didn't test the market before buying something. Yeah. All he should have done was buy the library. That's all he needed, the library. That's it. Yeah, he was, he was, he's, he's kind of power hungry. He was so hell bent. Like, I bought Ring of Honor. Yeah, now you're fucking it up. <laughs> like, like, or or if you want to re- put Ring of Honor on YouTube like you did Dark and Dark Elevation, it'll do numbers there. Yeah. 
take the dark and dark elevation, rebrand them Ring of Honor shows. It'll work that way, I think. That's got to be your compromise since they can't get a TV slot. You know, or, yeah. So, it's a, there's going to be a lot. I'm going to just see if they're going to do a whole different, if it's going to be a brand split, which was hinted at with Collision. They're going to have new champions and stuff, or if it's just going to be, like, kind of their version of Thunder. So I hope they do it right. If they do it, they actually do a brand split. They have a big enough roster for a brand, brand split. It should have uh, just been WWE, ROH, but that's whatever. Yeah. WWE already isn't following the rules of their brand split. Like, already. Mm. Well, they, they so, ruined that with the world title tournament. That's that's exactly my point. So Which I still don't get the logic right. for that one. Exactly. I don't get the logic outside, for that Outside of WWE, marketing, it doesn't make any sense for anything else. Well, it's it's new matchups, right? It's new matchups for, for titles matches, which is what you want, which yeah. is good. But if you're going to separate them, keep them separate. You know what they should have done? You, you, like, if they, they, I mean, they're clearly want to do like the tournament on SmackDown Raw. But they should have said that winner is a world. If the, if the winner from the person from SmackDown wins the world title, then they move exclusively to Raw. Save it right there. They didn't say that yet? No, they didn't. They did not say that. They didn't swap the title. So Bianca still has the Raw title on SmackDown. And Rhea's been, Rhea, yes, Rhea still has the. Oh, Rhea, yeah, my yeah, yeah, God. I know. I know. Uh, the glorious book of Triple H. So, yeah, 20 con. <laughs> I hope you learn from their mistakes. Is what I'm trying to get at. Is what I'm trying to get at. Oh, Grand Metalik showed up on Dynamite. Good for him. I always thought he was poorly utilized in WWE. God. And there, yep, yeah, there you go. AW has signed somebody else. Grand Metalik. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The... That's why I stopped watching AEW. I can't keep up, dude. I can't. I can't keep up with wrestling. It's too much, dude. It's too much wrestling. Which is which is weird that we've gotten to this point. In uh, in in the world of wrestling, <laughs> have we have we hit the limit in wrestling? Oh yeah, which is funny because Impact is also still a thing. And the, by the way, we're not even going to cover it on the show. Impact also has an event on Friday night. Good for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which ironically, on like my Google TV in like my room, I can actually watch Impact for like free on like the free channels. Is Impact like the current Impact? That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's all I was on Access Television. <laughs> I don't know. Like I was on my Google TV in my bedroom the uh, last night, just like searching, like because Google TV gives you like seventy seven or something free channels of like random shit, and one of them is Impact. I was like, it's fucking amazing. So, AW Collision uh, happening in a month from now. Um, We'll see how it goes. I probably won't be watching it. Who knows? I'll probably forget about it. Um, You know, there's always the CM Punk rumor. What's, oh my God, please no. Um, But we'll see what happens. Oh, that's happening, baby. (laughs) If it's in Chicago. CM Punk might bring me back. I can't wait to watch him. Dude, I I just love watching CM Punk fall from grace. It's (laughs) every time. Every time. Hell yeah. All right, now it's time to get into our our, our show of shows, our three view uh, show with, with with event number one, WWE's Night of Champions. This event is going to be at a special start time because they're in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia at one p.m. on Saturday. One p.m., folks. Remember that. One p.m. on Saturday, not eight. 1 p.m. on the East Coast. All right. I'll be watching it on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Which they are sticking with the Night of Champions theme. It is going to be a big Night of Champions thing because they haven't done Night of Champions. Uh, actually, well, do you want to know the last time they did Night of Champions? Uh, 2019. Uh, further back. Oh, really? 2017. Uh, Something like that. Yeah, it's the Night of Champions where Seth almost killed Sting. Really? Yep. Wow. That might have been 2016. <laughs> yeah. It was that Night of Champions. <laughs> so they haven't run it in a while. It's a good gimmick, Night of Champions. Yeah, well, mo- and most of WWE's titles are on the line, especially the beginning of this new WWE World Heavyweight Championship, or maybe it's new, maybe it's not new. There is some discussion on our Discord, and I don't know if you saw it, Will. Um, and it's rumored that this world title will will be a direct lineage. It was 2015, thank you, friends. This new world title will be a direct descendant of, like, the original world title, like Big Goldie. And I was like, yeah. hold on a second. What do you mean, hold on a second? That's a dud to me. Huh? It's a dud. That's not possible. It's the same name and, the same name and pretty much the same design. Well, no, it's not possible. Why not? All right, so think about it. John Cena 
and Randy Orton unified them to create the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which is the black belt, uh-huh. right? Oh, you're right. No, I see. Okay, I see. okay. If you're going to wrestling yeah. logic here, I see what you mean. Which is the black. Okay, when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Because it be- then it became one belt with the rock, right? <laughs> and now it's the one Roman currently has with a new logo on it. Well, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it, it became, yeah. And then when and then they created a universal title, and then Roman unified technically the universal and the WWE world title to be the undisputed universal world heavyweight champion. So there is no way in hell logically that this can be a direct descendant. Hey dude, it's just, it's all incest at this point. <laughs> at this point. In the big gold belt goes, welcome back. That goes like the Southern wrestling. Hey, it all fits. Something like that. Um, even though AJ Styles has come out and said, this is clearly a secondary title, especially with Roman having two belts. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, well, it's the same. But this is again, we've said that this is the Seth Rollins "Shut Up, You're You're Somebody" title. Yeah, but it's just, it's still it's, it's Seth Rollins is still going to gripe about it though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because also the thing Roman still has both belts. He's about to have four. <laughs> <laughs> Roman still have both belts, and I'm excited for this matchup. They 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 showed a lot of the footage. Um, of Seth and AJ from back in the day when AJ faced Seth when he was like 19 and AJ called him the future of the business, which he was right. Um, you know, and so they, they played it up. They had Seth doing a lot of interviews because Seth is actually out doing a Marvel movie right now. Um, he's actually going to be a Captain America. Cap, he's going to be in the Captain America 4 New World Order, which is ironic that it's NWO. And I really want Seth Rollins to come out as like an NWO member. <laughs> in Marvel for no reason, just totally like pop my Marvel and wrestling fandom all at once. Hollywood Rollins, <laughs> does, does, get, the get the guitar everywhere. <laughs> He'd do it. He probably has already done it. He spray paints Captain Shield <laughs> with the NWO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I want all of that. That's just the trailer. Is is Seth Rollins coming out as Hollywood Hogan and spray painting NWO on the on Captain America's shield? That's exactly what I want. Uh, but they they played up Seth being kind of a sympathetic babyface that wants to be like, oh, Roman stole all the titles. I want to give everybody opportunity. Blah 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 blah. Seth should win this. I'm excited for how this match is gonna go because Seth's a great worker and AJ Styles makes anybody look that much better. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a phenomenal. It's it's the best thing is it's not gonna be an event. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, here's the here's the thing. WWE's on their bullshit again because for the advertisement for Night of Champions, it said it's their three main events. Uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can, okay, okay, okay. Time out. Time out. Pause. Pause. Right, pause. Uh-huh. The main event is what goes last. I don't Agreed. care what anybody says. That is the event. That is the main one. Now. It took me a little bit to get convinced for night one and night two of WrestleMania. It's like okay, like with with Undertaker with that uh, with him and AJ main event in night one of yeah, WrestleMania yeah, yeah. in like, twenty twenty. I was like, all right, fine, technically. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, no, 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 no. The next year, I was like, no, 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 this is bullshit. No, no, this is the main event. It goes on last. Mm-hmm. So you can get you can get away with it there for WrestleMania because it's two nights. You know, two nights. Yeah. And you as you as a ticket holder can pick which one's more important to you. Correct. Which match is more important to you. So, yes, it is a legitimate main event. Mm-hmm. It's not a main event if it's in the middle of the, middle of the card. <laughs> yeah. like It's it's a main attraction. I, I like saying main attraction. It's not the main event. I agree. There's only one main event. There's no, no, no participation trophies in this bullshit, all right? Yeah, but it's three main events, so we're all agreeing. Seth's got to win. Let's move on uh, to what's, which probably is one of the two, out of the second of the three main events, uh, Brock and Cody. We still don't know why Brock's mad. Uh, we know they're trying to injure Cody to make him a more sympathetic baby face, but how much more of a sympathetic baby face can you make Cody than what you did to his build to WrestleMania? Like, I think we got the job done here, uh, but now Cody might be going and injured. Triple H told him to stop. They had this kind of really dramatic um, moment at the end of Raw where I want to point you guys to a particular thing that happened. So Cody's making his case, and just like Daniel Bryan has done before to Triple H in real life, we're like, well, fucking look at you. You always finish the fucking match, which is true. Yeah. He was... Porn quad, baby. Was, yeah, yeah, twice. Um... Well, that's the reason him and Stephanie got married, because, you know, you know, Torn Quad and Stephanie came to his aid. Anywho, um, so he, they, they point out that obvious, then Triple H kind of just says, like, an okay, you can find him, pats him on the back, and doesn't really say anything. And I, I might be reading into this too, this too much, but if Triple H is long conning Cody, I think it's perfect. 
Yeah. <laughs> if Triple H comes out with knee pads clearly under his pants, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I do honestly believe he will never get in the ring again. Like no, in, he's never yeah, going to no, 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 no. I think that that's way too detrimental to his Well, here's, here's the thing, Ricky. If this was like six years ago, I'd be all for it. But if Triple H turns heel, you he, what can you do after that? You know what I mean? He becomes he Mr. He, McMahon he, without he, the wrestling acumen. And, but, like, even Vince got in the ring a few times. That's Triple H true. can't get in the ring. And, like, Triple H, Vince was also never a wrestler, so it worked as the boss. Yeah. Like, Triple H is he's a 15 time, 14 time world champion. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, if you're going to turn on Cody, Cody has to get his compets on you, but you're not going to get in the ring. It's like you're setting up something that's never going to get a payoff. That's my only hes- hesitation for that's, it. Makes I think sense. Triple H is. Triple H, the less Triple H is an on-screen character, I think the better. Yeah, I mean, it makes his presence that much more, like, important when he does show up. Yeah. Um, but you, you never know what trips, man. You never know what trips. That's that's all I'm saying. I don't even know who wins this, to be honest with you. Does Cody already beat Brock? I mean, here's the thing. Does this lead to Cody Brock 3? I don't know. We never got Bobby Brock three, so who knows? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, I'm still upset about that. I just really wanted Bobby Brock three. That was tailor made for WrestleMania. Yeah. Could you imagine Bobby and Brock opening the show of night two? Hey, we got Bobby Almost. I mean, Brock Almost. Brock so, Almost. Hey, that was that that happened. The Almost Sapiens. Um. Wait, 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 where's he on this card? Oops. He wrestled last. Card. He wrestled last year with Braun. Remember that match? They had a lay yeah. in and everything. There's a press conference for Night of Champions. Remember Braun Strowman fought Tyson Fury at, in Saudi Arabia? Was it Braun that fought Tyson? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That happened. <laughs> I mean, Cain Velasquez also fought in Saudi Arabia as well. Yeah, but we, we, we do a lot to forget Kane's about that one. He's now in jail. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I don't know who wins this. I'm going to say... Uh, they made Cody a real sympathetic baby. I think Cody's gonna win. I do too. I think I think this is when we get the Cody bleeding spot. I think Cody bleeds here. Yeah, yeah. I think Cody bleeds. Uh, this is probably the third main event here. Um, Sammy and Kevin Owens. Which, how the hell is Sammy going to Saudi Arabia versus uh, Solo? Uh, there's a, there's, a, there's a peace deal. There was a peace deal between Syria and Saudi Arabia. Oh, that explains a yeah. lot. So like, or like, there is a. Uh, I think it's Syria. There is, there is like, there is some kind of diplomatic resolution where mm-hmm. Sammy is now allowed in the country. Interesting, interesting, because that really confused me. Um, Believe me, these two are completely unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really, really confused me. So you have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn putting their tag titles on the line against Sola Sokoa and everybody's favorite family manipulator and abuser and gaslighter, Roman Reigns. Um, who I had something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know, I was talking about this with somebody, like, I know this is all storyline and everything, but what Roman is doing, right, so let, me, let me just put a spotlight on me. What Roman is doing to his family members in from a psychological and a real world perspective is abuse to the umpteenth power like oh i've been taking notes <laughs> yeah it is abuse if you if you were you or someone <laughs> else you know somebody who's experiencing this like tell them to seek help right now because this all of this that he's been doing for the past three years especially to jay is total abuse and family manip- manipulation and gaslighting it is not good it is very traumatic for people who have been through it i'm not saying i have but i'm just saying it's very traumatic for people who have been through it be it as it may it is such compelling story um for in the wrestling world um because just when you think they might have like kind of kind of jumped the shark with the bloodline storyline roman bumps in the solo and looks visibly scared but he bumped in the solo yeah, that was interesting. That little moment was very interesting. I was like, oh, that's there's a ripple. It's a great little ripple, because you know what it was? Um, Jay Uso won't be the one to beat him. Um, I mean, it's a great story, but Jay Uso will be the one to help Roman go down. Um, but you know what it was? And I was talking about this with Sir Charles. Shout out to Sir Charles. Um, and he reminded me uh, during Clash of the Castle, a fantastic event, by the way, um, it was revealed afterwards that Roman didn't... Roman did not ask for Solo to be there. In storyline, Solo was sent by the by the family. 
Interesting. To help out Roman. So that 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 and from that way it makes good storyline sense. And I also I also love how when Roman announced that him and Solo were going to go for the titles, he was going to dedicate it. One, well, he also shit on the Usos. The for greatest tag team. The Wild Samoans. <laughs> yeah. I was, okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. He all he also did take a good jab at him. He's like, why the hell did you dedicate the match to me? I am a singles performer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got a point. <laughs> He's like, how dare you? <laughs> like, He's like, that was really stupid, Oos. <laughs> you didn't even get the job done. <laughs> oh, my God. If we got, like, a really big, like, wet, like, uh, wig on you, you'd be a great, like, very pasty Roman. <laughs> Dude, I'm working on my Roman impression. <laughs> it's, 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 it's getting there. Because he's got, he's got the slow and demean. He's like, I had something to say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm in town, <laughs> around, meeting people to impress. <laughs> I love it. A syllable to drag down. Come on. Oh, man. Uh, this should be fun. So here's a question. How does Roman eat a loss and still look strong? By the way, by the way, this is also going to be the the time of his match. This will also be day one thousand of his uh, undisputed Universal Heavyweight Championship reign. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins them. <laughs> My God, could you? Imagine? I seriously wouldn't because Sammy and Kevin are so stale. <laughs> like, you know why? Because Riddle ruined them. Yeah, yeah, that might be <laughs> it. Is there just like, it's just like, wow, what? What happened to you guys? It's like same thing happened to Kevin Owens last year when he made him with Stone Cold. Mm-hmm. It's just like, all right, you had your moment, but then you had nothing planned afterwards. Yeah, you put Riddle with them, and you saw how that ended. That was freaking horrible. Yeah, and like I don't know if it's Kevin and Sammy's fault, but it's just I don't like think it I is. just, it's just kind of. It's, there's nothing for you here now. Because there's no tag division. Like they won the tag titles. Jay, who are they? Who are they fighting? Who are they fighting? Yeah. I mean, that's a, the tag team division is getting there. You have a lot of core tag, like the Imperium as a tag team. We, can you imagine Imperium with the tag titles and the IC title? That's a solid faction. You know, if Legato can give a win, they would be good with the tag titles as well. Judgment Day could use tag titles. There's a bunch of people, but they, they still have them in the Bloodline storyline. And it's kind of like without, well, I mean, also without Roman, the Bloodline storyline kind of fell apart. For a while, and they had to do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do like this little wrinkle. I mean, if Roman wins these titles, Lord Almighty, I can't wait to be on the internet. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. I, I just, like, Paul Heyman's going to be like, I need help carrying titles. <laughs> it's going to be, Paul Heyman's going to be, like, dragging titles around. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's like Paul Heyman's gonna need a second manager. Like a match striker's gonna come out with him. <laughs> he's, gonna bring, he's, gonna bring, no, he's gonna have Byron Saxton. That's what it is. Yeah, Byron. Byron's gonna carry. Oh, him. the bloodline bitch yeah. is Byron Saxton. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I honestly, Solo with all four would be pretty cool too, though. I can see Solo with all four. Solo one on each shoulder and wearing two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Roman's because Roman already has two for his. Yeah, Roman's like, I don't even want to hold these. Yeah. I'm just, I, it's like, Roman's like, I used to just prove a point. Solo, well, you can have all the Pretty gold. much. Rub it, in, rub it in the face of the older brothers. Exactly. I think it's, I mean, this is, of all the main events, this of all the bigger matches, this is the one that's probably the most unpredictable. Because um, either Sammy and Kevin weasel their way or Roman and Solo win these bouts. I'm going to go with a disaster scenario as Roman and Solo win these tag belts. Yeah, but here's a th- here's I think here's the ripple, right? The Usos help him win the belts, and uh-huh. Roman gets mad at the Usos for helping. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Ultimate gaslighting, right? Which yeah. both the manipulation and gaslighting. And Jay's like, "What do you want me to do, Us? I want to help you, Us." Yeah. <laughs> and then like, what was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to do? I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> your Jay Uso might be a lot better than your Roman. <laughs> <laughs> what do I for you? <laughs> like, Oh my God! So yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> like, honestly, though, like, I, I, what do you want me to do, Roman? I helped you, but I get mad at me helping. But I didn't help you, mad at me for not helping you. So I think, I think that could be a thing. You know, the Usos help him win. Roman's just like, I told you to stay in the back. 
yeah, I think that think that'll be a thing. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Bloodline. Bloodline almost has all the gold. Dude, never go against Roman winning. Roman winning. I mean, here's the thing, dude. Roman hasn't lost anything since Baron Corbin in 2019. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not tell Baron about that either. Like any any match Roman has been involved in, he has won. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So this uh, this so, might be an LOL Roman wins moment again. I, I, I can't see him being made to look weak in any way, shape, or form. And even, like, if he's on a losing team, obviously, obviously he's yeah, not no, going to get pinned. If he loses, Duh. it's Solo's taking that loss. Solo's going to get pinned. Fine, but I can't see one blemish on this title run until he loses yeah. the belts. I don't see one. Not the only cop-out he has is that he did mention, I'm a singles competitor. That is his one cop-out. Dude, he could... He he could win the belts, come on smack, and be like, I don't even want these fucking things. Maybe like maybe we need Roman to win so that they have so many damn belts that he has to unify and create new tag belts. Like, could you imagine? Yeah. That's, he's like, look, I'm a good guy. I got I got these new tag belts for everybody. <laughs> I'm running out of limbs to carry belts. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> oh my god! Um, did you see his new shirt? Sammy's not pitting Roman, Mister Fred. Stop did you it. See- Oh, oh, I did. So it's Roman's new shirt is life not life's not fair, but I'm still and it has a picture of a goat on it. Eh. It's funnier in person. Uh, it's better. It's better than his. It's better than his god, oh, god shirt. mode. It should yeah. be god. Yeah, god mode. It's like uh, a different uh, level. It's like it's go out and go out. Yeah, god Godal. mode. God mode's better. Um, yeah, but it's, it's you can't just do greatness on and then. Well, the you, never do articles. you never do articles <laughs> when you're doing um when you're doing abbreviations. Uh, it should be Goddle then. <laughs> Goddle. Well, what'd you do on no. then? Oh, you don't do short, so it's like... So why is O on? <laughs> why oh, is o on? So Why do you do you're O right. and not yeah, greatness on, It's usually, never mind, it's just the articles like A, the, and that shit. So yeah, greatness on a different level. Should be Goddle. But I think God, God was better. I mean, I, I thought they yeah. were going for. It was just like the grammatically yeah, didn't make it's sense. It's fine. It's wrestling. Not, not, not a lot of us make sense. Uh, but yeah, bloodline all day. Moving on. Uh, Becky and Tr- Becky and Trish are also going to be in this in a really weird graphic for them. You totally see it was like they tried to de-age Trish's face on this thing. Um, but there, this was a rivalry or a match that I was really into, and then the contract signing happened, and Becky brought up the Trish getting on all fours and barking like a dog moment. I'm like, oh, we've got something here now. I am. Yeah. Now, I mean, when this, when this feud first started, I was like very meh. Now I'm like, all right, Becky, you maybe want to watch you kick some ass. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm all for this. I, I, I'm all for this, and we, we know for right now, Trish is a full time wrestler. Uh, again, I don't think she's leaving after. No, she's not. Well, she was drafted, which makes her full time. I do not believe she's leaving after Night of Champions. Hey, hey. The 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 Stevenson guy was drafted the raw in the last draft. He didn't Ooh, do anything. Gable Gable He's Stevenson still in college. Was drafted the raw. I know, but he was drafted the raw. He's and still didn't in do college. <laughs> it's like it's the same thing. He's as going like, back to amateur. He's going back to same amateur thing wrestling. With the MLB draft. Yeah, then why I don't know. Ask Major League Baseball. That's your sport. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Why they so you can have the them? rights to that. Why they draft the raw is to not appear on raw. <laughs> yeah, I, it's 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 the I don't know. Drafts are weird. That's my point. Just because she was drafted doesn't mean she's gonna be around for the next six. months. I didn't months. say six months, but I don't think she's going anywhere after Night of Champions. How long? How long she stick around for then? SummerSlam. I'd see her do a SummerSlam run. Yeah. Yeah, I see her do a SummerSlam run. If she, for her winning, I mean, based on the theory of opposite momentum that I blotted here for like the entire life of my time on this podcast, I would say Trish wins because Becky fucking owned Trish last night or a couple nights ago on Raw. You're also in Trish Saudi wins. Arabia. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They make Give the fans something happy. You know, the fans waited 20 years to see Trish. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 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 Trish, I think yeah, Trish give, wins. Give I agree. Becky. Some shenanigans. Pulls the tights. Grabs a booty. <laughs> maybe she, maybe Trish pulls a Mickey James. Oh, I got it. Low blow. No, no. Trish pulls a Mickey James from WrestleMania 23. Uh, Grabs her on the crotch. Do? Remember? That's the right. One- I think it would be really funny if Trish gave a low blow and Becky sold it like she had balls. <laughs> she is the man. Well, no, they, haven't they had women sell low blows like they have balls before in the past? I feel like they did during the Attitude Era a lot. 
That'd be really funny if they did. I mean, it's yeah, gonna it's, hurt. It's, so it's I gotta hurt. I'm yeah, yeah. Kicked, I'm, I'm assuming getting kicked in the twat yeah, doesn't no, feel good. I, I, yeah, yeah, not at all. But yeah, Trish is winning. Trish is going to win by nefarious means. Shout out to Dave. Um, moving on. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. Award. The Intercontinental Championship. Uh, is on the line with free agent Mustafa Ali winning the battle royal to go up against Gunther. Again, Mustafa Ali is also going to Saudi Arabia to fight. Okay. I thought he's been I there before, no? He has. Like multiple I don't times. Because I feel like he abstained a lot of the time. What is his national? Muslim. I thought he was Middle Eastern. Well, no, his religion is Muslim. I don't know what is it. Yeah. Muslim. And a Muslim, a Muslim isn't directed towards yeah. one country, stupid me. Um, I don't know exactly uh, what his what his ethnicity is. I thought he always got the Saudi push. No, that's Mansoor. Uh, and, oh, Mans- Mansoor's, <clears throat> Mansoor isn't a gay Mansoor. gimmick, so you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I always thought uh, Ali Mustafa got, like, a, a Saudi push as well. I don't remember. I mean, I, I feel like he has. I just... There's, he hasn't had a match that stuck that stuck out to me. Um, I'm interested to see how this match goes for him. I don't think he's winning. I think it's hilarious. He's a fucking. He's a free. Yeah. No, of course, he's not winning. He hasn't done. Dude, here's the thing about this kind of thing. Because like, say, uh, oh, when they when they did do a Mansoor, right, mm-hmm. or Mansoor, say 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 it was Mansoor, yeah. and he won that battle out uh-huh. of nowhere. Uh, to make this more believable. Ali, Mansoor, or everyone make that Saudi push. Like, like the same thing with like um what's her name? Zelina Vega sure. in Puerto Rico. They should have like if you knew that you're going to Puerto Rico or you know you're going to Saudi Arabia and you want to push that hometown hero, you sh- they should be on TV being built for Which months. is what which is, su- yeah, I subtly. mean they never they never really did it with Mansoor. He kind of just showed up and he was like he's essentially yeah. it's a, the big joke is he was always he's like the Goldberg in Saudi Arabia like he never loses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they could they could have done the yeah. same thing with Ali since pre WrestleMania. Like this, win win the I don't know, I don't know uh, Bobby Lashley to win the Andre, but he could have won the Andre. He could have had a few big matches on Raw and then win the Battle Royal to make me think he actually has a chance yeah. against Gunther. Because now it's just like we he's know been he doing a chance. lot of uh, he's been spot. doing a lot of backstage <laughs> packages. I mean, he was in the ring a couple of times, but it's a lot more him like backstage trying to, like he's kind of like trying to find another character again, which is. Yeah. Okay, cool and dandy. Um, I've always been a big moose of a fan, especially after I think we met him in New Orleans, hungover. Uh, yeah, super, super ni- nice. Yeah, super, super nice, nice guy. guy. I always <laughs> wish him the best. Um, that money in the bank when Brock came back really fucked him over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brock murdered <laughs> yeah. the fuck out of him. Um, I just want for him to put on a competitive match with Gunther. Like, I don't want. And the match will be yeah. the match is going to be great. That's not my problem. I'm saying the, there's no build. And there's no believability. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you on that. And it's not that hard to do that. Like WWE, WWE is not a really build that are not in like the top anymore. top. I mean, but then again, you can argue yeah. that they, they did a shit job building uh, Charlotte and Rhea, and they tore the house down at Mania. Agreed. You know. Yeah, they did, but it still did a no, shit job did a shit building, building it. Again. But also that that. And that's bad. That's two established stars. Yeah, though. which is crazy that you couldn't, you know, build two established stars. And like when Ali loses this match, he's gonna go back to obscurity until the next. It time might also depend Arabia. on how the match goes. Maybe this, maybe something big comes from this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested by it. Like I said, uh, Gunther's gonna win, but I'm interested to see how this plays out for Mustafa. And w- essentially, can he win in a loss? It's gonna be hard because Gunther's no. so fucking dominant. Um, no, I don't, I don't think he could win no loss because he yeah. hasn't because he's lost plenty of times and hasn't gotten anything from it. Sometimes it just takes one match to change change a change of perspective, but we'll see what happens uh, here. Uh, moving on. Uh, hey, hey, WrestleMania rematch. Uh, Asuka versus Bianca. This is a match because it's Night of Champions. Uh, again, I don't know where you go from this. Bianca's winning, which is a shame for Asuka. Uh, because ever since she's pretty much revamped the Kana gimmick, which, by the way, Will, she puts on that makeup by herself before like every before every event. How? I watched a video of her doing it because everybody released it. Yeah, that it's absurd that 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 process of putting on all of that. You know how long it takes. I, don't know, it, I can tell you it took a long time because it was a time lapse video. Okay, it's a time lapse of five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All I hope for this, Bianca's winning, but all I hope for this is that they put on a better show than they did at WrestleMania, which actually wasn't a bad match. It just, there was nothing there for it. Yeah. Agreed. You know, so great. Let's move on, because we got a lot of people to go to. Oh, yeah, and also Natty and Rhea are a thing. Um, so Rhea versus Natty for the SmackDown women's title. Um, <sighs> Who cares? Rhea's win. This is why it's the final match on the card, or the final match that we're going through on the card. Uh, Rhea's winning. Natty, I mean, speaking of people who are not even on TV, Natty's barely on. Mustafa's on TV more than Natty. Yeah, where did Natty come from? I don't fucking remember. She came in for a save for when Rhea was beating up somebody, and that's how the match came to be. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I love Natty. I think she's great. I think she's always been kind of... They don't, they don't use Natty to the most of her abilities a lot of the time, but we'll see what happens with her and Rhea. We'll see. But Rhea's winning. It's clear that's all that matters. So that ends our first event that we're going through, Night of Champions. Again, 1 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time on Saturday from Saudi Arabia. Make sure you have all of your snackies and stuff for it. Uh, and then you can go out and finish the rest of your day uh, for Night of Champions. But big question is, how good will this premium live event be? One crowns being bad, ten crowns being the best show ever. I'm going to go first. I'm going to say... <sighs> Outside of the three quote unquote marquee or main event matches, it is a toss up for most of these other matches. It is a big toss up because a lot of the other matches are really fucking obvious. But I'm going to go. <laughs> Fretz is going to say a one. It's not going to be a. Oh, no, it's a seven. My fault, Fretz. I corrected it at seven. I'm going to go 7.5. I'm going to go straight seven. Me and Fretz are in agreement. <laughs> yeah. I know some of them. But again, it's all going to. Like, I, like the, the marquee matches are going to be marquee, and I think they're going to live up to their. To their expectations, it's gonna. It's always gonna be about that undercard, and see what happens. But I'm gonna go seven point five. Will says seven. Fred says seven. Let's move on to AEW Double or Nothing. One of their four major pay per views throughout the year. Um, cause it's really weird. And I was thinking about this. Well, AEW has a lot of their bigger events like Double or Nothing, All In, all around the summertime. Like, there's really nothing in the middle outside of, like, full gears in the fall. So you have double or nothing now. All in's going to be in, like, June, July, July, I believe. Full gears in what? September? And then Revolution is what? February? February, yeah. yeah. For some reason, it doesn't feel like it's always that spaced out. Maybe because they announced All In, and they've been really talking about All In Wembley Stadium, which apparently has to be their WrestleMania. Um, but double or nothing's right here, but the next thing you know, you're going to blink and it's All In. Um, Did this, this podcast I listened to the other day had a great joke. They should do uh, every year. They should do all in, then nine months later do all out. Yeah, yeah. And they should. No, no, you, you, you missed the joke there, Ricky. Hmm. You do, you do, you do all in. Yeah. And then you do all, all out. nine months, all out. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> okay. Got ah uh, ha 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 ha. Uh, it's a sex joke. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That, that's great. Uh, but be it as it may, they always load up these events that they have, and they make it seem. It's all kind of my issue with this, because even though Wembley Stadium is their big thing, every AEW pay per view since there's so min- so little of them, there's four, are always these WrestleMania level things, which which really kind of screws me up because I'm like, which one's the big event? But we now know it's all in. Um, but for instance, they're doing a lot. They have a fan fest again Saturday, May twenty seventh, fan fest from ten a.m. to six p.m. because Double or Nothing is going to be Saturday at eight, which is going to include uh, the likes of the these people. Upper Deck is going to be there because people still buy cards. <laughs> um, uh, the Road to Double or Nothing apparently is a show. It's going to be at the MGM Grand Conference Center. Uh, All Elite Arcade for AEW games because guess what, Will? AEW Fight Forever is coming out next month. I, I heard it has, a, it has a release date. Is it June or July? It is June 27th. I can't wait to not buy it. Mm-hmm. It's 60 bucks on all platforms. And the <laughs> graphics look not promising. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, you have, they're going to do AW Unrestricted Live, All Elite Arcade. Ryan Nemeth is going to do a comedy show because the Zigglers love to do comedy shows. Ryan Nemeth is Dolph Ziggler's younger brother. 
Um, and AEW Q&A hosted by RJ City. Again, folks, that is FanFest. On top of FanFest, they are going to have a bunch of meet and greets. Also, Saturday, May 27th, uh, at, I believe at the MGM Grand from 11 to 1230, you can meet Hangman Page, Jungle Jack Perry, FTR, Jade Cargill, the acclaimed and daddy ass, and Wardlow. And then at the next session from 1245 to 215, you can meet the Hardy Boys. Surprisingly enough, they'll be available. John Moxley, um, Brian Danielson, Claudia Casanoli, and Wheeler Yuta. Not Kyle from Apron Bump, the real Wheeler Yuta. Uh, Darby Allen and everybody's favorite hater, the AW Women's Champion, uh, Jamie, Jamie Hater. At the third session of the meet and greets uh, from 2.30 to 4, you can meet Anna. Um, Anna J, Sammy and Tamello, the Jericho Appreciation Side of JS, House of Black, uh, Tony Storm, Roddy Strong, because Roddy needs to do something. Um, and then on the final session, Saturday, May 27th, from 4.15 to f- for 5.45, you can meet the Lucha Bros, Ruby Soho, Adam Cole, Bebe, uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, because obviously Adam Cole's right there, Orange Cassidy, and the Switchblade J. White. So there's a lot going on for this week and for AW Double or Nothing that's not in the ring. And before we go into editing, well, I do need to ask you, did you hear about what happened to Matt Hardy? No, what happened to Matt Hardy? Someone hacked his Twitter like two weeks ago while he was on TV at Rampage. Oh, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> what they say. Everything. <laughs> Just look it up. <laughs> they just call Lita a cunt 8,000 times in a row. <laughs> One of the tweets that was really popular, he's like, not going to lie, if I was Edge, I'd bang Lita too. I'm not... <laughs> He tried to hit on Rebby, his wife. Oh, <laughs> oh man. And then he they posted a tweet that was like, hey, sorry, guys, I just got hacked. It's all under control. I'm going to take care of this right now. And then the next week was like, psych, still me. Psych, <laughs> <laughs> still me. <laughs> yeah. How the hell they got it? I don't know, but they were having a field day. Dude. Dude, what would you tweet if you had okay, pick a wrestler and what would you pick tweet? Pick a wrestler and what would I tweet? Oh man. Oh my god. I gotta pick You know what it is? Just because I'm petty, it'd probably be Giovanni Vinci. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it'd probably be Giovanni Vinci. Just because of what happened oh, in New Orleans. Man. I would t- I might just, I'm and I might have to take the Velveteen Dream then. Oh, that's just cruel. Oh <laughs> that's yeah. That's just cruel. I see the copy. I just need to go into a drafts folder and hit send. <laughs> you know what? I might actually, if I was being really petty, maybe I'd maybe I'd hack Hulk's Twitter. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, because all you gotta do, you can say whatever you want, and then just put HH at the end, and everybody thinks it's him. Yeah, <laughs> I might. I might. You know what, dude? No, I take the Iron Sheik. Just, you're just gonna write in all caps the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I just write like a, like a, I just write like in a, in a calm, soothing, <laughs> normal voice. I pooped today. Poop emoji. H H I N G. H H I N G. Um. That motherfucker, Hulk Hogan tweet. <laughs> Dude, Sheik tweets are the best. Oh, I love Sheik. It's it, like I love the Iron Sheik and I love uh, Wendy's tweets. Or maybe maybe I'd hack Vince McMahon back. You know what? I did pay for it, and I do it again. In fact, I did it today. Because <laughs> you know Vince doesn't run his own Twitter account. No, not a chance. Not a chance. No chance in hell. No pun intended. Uh, but moving on, uh, AEW does have a pretty loaded gimmick fest of a pre of a pay per view for Double or Nothing, starting with the Four Pillars AEW World Championship match: Jungle Boy Jack Perry versus Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara versus AEW World Champion MJF Fatal Four Way. Um, the AW World title, these are the quote unquote pillars of AEW finally getting what the marks won, a fatal four way. Uh, so tell me, Will, why MJF is still going to retain? Oh, because he's way better than all of them. Yeah. Like, uh, he's a main eventer. The other three aren't. It's that simple. Yeah. Um, not to mean they aren't going to be in the future. I think it's a good spot for all of them. Like, if you have nobody to actually legitimately challenge for MJF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do something like this and build somebody. I think I don't think this is a knock on all the other three guys. It's just it's not believable that any of you are going to win. And that's okay. MJF is just that good. Comparatively, yes. Yes, comparatively. comparatively yeah. Also Jungle Boy Jack Perry, 
don't know if you, I don't know if you know this, Ricky. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hates press. <laughs> really? He, and and he hates. He really hates Billy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So there was a, there were clips that came out of him at Comic Con mm. and like doing a like Q and A Q&A session, and so, there was someone asked him was just like. Um, if you if you were like if you were dying and had to watch one last wrestling match, what would it be? In is like, if you were on your deathbed, what what wrestling match would you watch? And and, and Jungle Boys goes, man, if I'm on my deathbed, I gotta tell you, I'm definitely not watching wrestling. Like that was the an answer. <laughs> and then like it's just like okay, and it's just like uh, what good advice have you had? And he's like, um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I kind of learned you sometimes you just don't take advice. <laughs> like sometimes Billy Gunn telling you not to do flips isn't what, what you want to hear before you go for a match. <laughs> it's just like whoa, and someone else is just like. Would you want to feud with CM Punk? And he was just like, yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> this is so, why Jack Perry can't be world champion just right now. Just, just like, <laughs> just completely. And this is at Comic Con. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's not like it's a, like a nothing con. Like this is Comic Con. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I lost a button. It's completely uninterested. Oh, so he he pulled he pulled a Dean Ambrose. Yes. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's it was not a good look for him. It's like, dude, like I understand you hate doing press. Like I would hate doing press too. Like he just wants to go in the ring and do cool shit. That's fine. But bro, if you want to be a main eventer, you have to learn yeah. how to do press. You gotta you gotta keep the people. Yeah, I mean, take the Miz. The Miz is the perfect press person. Yes, I also saw he passed Dolph Ziggler's most losing wrestler Did he really? ever. So he lost his thirteen hundredth match Good job, the other day. Man. Also, you know his win his win percentage is like thirty percent. First ever two time Grand Slam champion. Isn't that nuts? That like a, a, a first thirty percent win percentage without yeah. question has a thirty percent win percentage. So wins and no, losses they, don't they don't matter. they don't at all. Uh, yeah, MJF's gonna Probably. win. Uh, Darby Allen's gonna jump up something really really ridiculous. Sting might get involved because why the fuck not? Uh, would you Would you want to see an MJF no. Sting match? I kind of I do. Don't, I, I, I don't want Sting to die in the ring at this point. I kind of do. <laughs> like It's like he's getting the flare levels of still wrestling. Like, stop. Like, really, really stop. Also, speaking of flare levels of wrestling and old people and HH, Hulk Hogan, this has nothing to do with AEW, but this also came to mind that I discovered today. Hulk Hogan went on someone's show and was like, he would. He never actually had an official retirement match, and he would do a retirement match at WrestleMania 40 in Philly if Stone Cold agreed to it. Oh <laughs> my God! We're getting four <laughs> seats if that's happening, Ricky. I gotta tell you, dude. I don't care if they're coming of Hulk Hogan wheelchair. <laughs> I want to see that match. Stone Cold be like, well, goddamn, Karen, let's let the boost. <laughs> you think Stone no, Cold would do it? No. Probably not. No, 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 no. Dude, he just stuns him and turns to <laughs> dust. <laughs> That'd be the best ending in WrestleMania history. <laughs> he gets he gets turned to dust like the, like the Avengers in Infinity War. <laughs> it just totally snaps from existence. Awesome, just <laughs> snaps, and Hulk Hogan's like. Uh, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan like grows hair again. <laughs> like it's the opposite. He He's like Vince. Young. I don't feel so good. <laughs> he he, he hooks up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be horrible. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't want to see Sting um, in this at all. Uh, Sammy Guevara will probably do work something cool, but MJF's gonna find a way to weasel his way to win. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I mean, this whole this whole card is very gimmicky, but this is going to be. I don't know how you. Shock. Yeah, yeah. It, it's gimmick. It's gimmick mania for this for this card, which is kind of my take away from you know the whole premise of a lot of your stories. Even though AEW is more gimmick than story, but let's move on. Uh, speaking of gimmicks, anarchy in the arena <laughs> is also happening on this card. So my, let's keep tally here, folks. We got a fatal four way for the world title. We have anarchy in the arena. Just because, um, essentially, the Blackpool Combat Club, Moxley, Claudio, who's in ROH, um, by the way, who's in ROH as the world champion, Brian Danielson, Wheeler Yuta, not Kyle from Apron Bomb, versus the revamped elite, 
Kenny, the Bucks, and one-eyed hangman Adam Page, who's doing a horrible Nick Fury impression. Um, this is going to be a thing. Does it even matter who wins? Yeah, I'm thinking about Austin and Hogan again. <laughs> and uh, what I want to happen, remember when, remember when uh, like Piper was like, are you going to fight Andre? And Hogan was just like, yes! Yes, yes, I, I remember want, that. I want, I want like the Kevin Owens show, and Austin just goes, Kevin, Kevin Owens goes, so you're going to fight Hogan? And Austin looks around and just goes, yeah! <laughs> I look back at those old Hogan segments. I was like, this guy was the most popular person in pop culture. Yeah, this, this balded up, roided out weirdo of an orange man was the most popular person in, was in pop running culture. on running on Flint, running on Flintstones vitamins and Jesus <laughs> prayers. Like, yeah, what? This is the guy. This was the guy. I was uh-huh. the guy, man. The 80s were a weird time. But oh, yeah, this match, uh, the Elite win. Sure, why not? Yeah, give them something to do. They're not going for titles. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the Elite winning, I guess. I don't even know what's going on. It's going to be in a big... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I want to see them fight on the strip. Oh, that, that'd be cool. That would pop me. If that'd they, be cool. If for somehow they manage to coordinate with like Las Vegas police and they're able to block off the strip by the MGM Grand for them to start fighting in it, sold all day. They're afraid of police, but guys, we have enough going on. This is Seriously, Vegas. Seriously, guys, come on. The Raiders are here. Like, what do you expect? Like, <laughs> come on, guys. Um, yeah, no, I, if, it, if they fight on the Las Vegas strip, all for it. Uh, moving on, again, another gimmicky match. So we have uh, Anarchy and Arena, a Fatal 4-Way. Now we have an officially unsanctioned match which is actually going to a contract signing tonight again really funny because the rules don't exist in wrestling uh chris jericho versus adam cole baby in an unofficial unsanctioned match which again like i said they're signing a contract for tonight on aew <laughs> we're signing a contract for a match that doesn't exist technically wow. yes yes wrestling folks well I mean, here's the thing they shouldn't call it a contract signing they should call it a waiver signing hold harmless agreement or something like that oh yeah that would make sense like it's not a contract well, i guess a waiver is technically a contract sure. so yeah i mean fine but there's there's better ways to word this i know i'm nitpicking here but no i agree with yeah, you just, like why are you having a contract signing for a match that's unsanctioned like gargano and champa didn't have a contract signing for an unsanctioned match yeah, like you need Tony Khan out there, guys. It's so you both can't sue me or the company. Sign it. Yeah, boom, and walk away. That's what it, that's what it should be. It's yeah. like you can call it a contract if you want, but that needs to be made clear that hey, you can't sue AEW because you know it's unsanctioned. Yeah, hold harmless agreement. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Adam Cole. Yeah, Adam Cole wins. Jericho. This is first match in how long? Who knows? There's a rumor about Adam Cole MGF maybe the next big feud, which I'm all here for. I'm all here for that as well. That'd be cool. Yeah, because Adam Cole, unlike most of MGF's other opponents, Adam Cole could tear him down on the mic if he wanted to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karrion Cross hasn't been the same since. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is, that is, that is very true. Wow. Yeah. Just, just remember that, folks. Karrion Cross hasn't been the same since. Okay. Just, if MGF's smart, he wouldn't make fun of the fact that Adam Cole's not that tall. But MGF's probably not going to be that smart. And Adam Cole's probably going to toast him. But yeah, Adam Cole wins this. Hope he goes on to face MJF in an unsanctioned match. Again, another gimmick from another gimmick to an actual to an actual not gimmicky match. It's just for the world title. Uh, everybody's favorite hater, AW World Champion Jamie Hater, who people just fucking adore, versus uh, the outcast, Tony Storm, going to get her title again, I guess. This is actually, if you remember our American blonde friend, Claire, this is like actually her favorite wrestler. So we, if I, if, I, if we hit up Claire, she'd probably be like, Tony Storm's going to win. Um, which actually might be a viable option. You know, I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with T- Tony Storm. Uh, yeah. Pay, uh, Soraya and her, her faction need a little something. They need to so do something. Put, put yeah. some, put some, put some heat on them. Getting the title win. Sure. Yeah. Hey, and people love hate her. So it'd be good for her to lose right now at this time. I'm going to try and actually watch this card, hopefully. Yeah, you can find a good stream somewhere. I know you're not going to go to the oh, movies fine. for it's it. Matter of, i got to watch it on Tuesday. Yeah. Or watch it on Monday. You're not doing No one's working. Are you working I'm Monday? driving on Monday. Oh, yeah. Have fun with that shit. But yeah, I'll go, I'll go Tony for this. I'll, I'll agree with, I'll agree with uh, the American Blonde Claire. Shout out to the American Blonde Claire. We need to, I, Shout out, Claire. Yeah, I, I thought about getting her on the show, especially for this AEW segment, but we were under the premise that we were going to have K, but it happens. We'll, we'll bring back Claire. Because uh, I know Claire was a very beloved guest by a lot of people. Uh, so we'll, we'll bring Claire back at some point. 
Uh, okay. Also, number semi non gimmicky match: AW World Tag Team Championship, FTR versus Team Former ROH and Team Former Impact: Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett and their Goonies with special guest referee Mark Briscoe. Why Mark's here? Not exactly sure. Why Jeff Jarrett's still wrestling? Again, not exactly sure. But they're going up against FTR in a regular AEW World Tag Team match. God, just when I was ready to watch this card, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett's on it. <laughs> I, I, I really, I just, I hate Jeff Jarrett, dude. I, I can't do, do it. I know you do. His, his father it's, was a genius. <clears throat> it's not even his fault. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Uh, I just Jeff Jarrett has a very punchable face. Any great? Ain't I great? No, you suck. <laughs> that's why you couldn't. That's why you couldn't keep a job for more than a year in the Attitude Era. You kept bouncing back and forth because you suck. <laughs> you really, you really do have a disdain for Jeff Jarrett. You know what it is? It's the tassels. I hated his gear. Oh, and, like, he okay. But like the Bucks wore tassels all the time. He had to be there, man. He had to watch <laughs> okay. it. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll... He was really bad. He was really bad in WCW, and he was he wasn't too bad in WWE. I'll give him yeah, that. Yeah, he, he he was a good, he was a pretty good heel in WWE in his prime, and him and Deborah, um, and all of that stuff. But FTR is winning this. Yep. Yeah, I feel like the last the next time FTR loses is when they'll retire. That's my. Is that thought. MVP behind Jarrett? No, no, I, I don't know. It's is that MV? Is that MVP and Bad Bunny? No, no, Bad Bunny's <laughs> not that big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, that's that's the basketball player, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know. It's the it's the dude that had the really crappy debut on Dynamite. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, they were rolling with Jeff Jarrett and Jay Leaf and that because uh, whatever, it's a thing. Um, it, it it's a thing. You know how bad ROH is. Jay Leaf was not even an ROH. Jay Leaf's on AW. <laughs> okay. Let's put that into perspective. All right. He's like, hey, man, I've, I've done my time. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Let's move on to, again, another gimmicky match on Double or Nothing. The TNT Championship, because I forgot that they named the title after a network. The, actually, you know what? Put the TNT title to world champion status when collision happens. Damn it. That's what I want. They, they, they named it at the two networks. It's also a TBS title. Well, that's, yeah, again. Again, when collision comes to TNT on Saturdays, put the TNT championship to world title status. Anywho. But oh, it's a, it's a ladder match? It's a ladder match between. Who has the belt? Wardlow, Wardlow versus Christian? Christian. Wardlow is the champion. But who, no, who has the Wardlow's Wardlow's champion? Wardlow's the reigning champion. Uh, Christian, who also has nice. Luchasaurus in. As like his 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 heavy, you know what? Christian wins. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, get Wardlow the hell out of there. <laughs> get him out of there. Yeah, I wonder what happened to Wardlow. Like, why did the crowd just stop caring about Wardlow? No, Christian has also been a next level heel on AEW, especially the shit he was pulling with uh with Jack Perry. Yeah. So I shit about fucking his mom was pretty good. Yeah, too. that was pretty wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if Christian wins this because I mean Christian is pretty much the king of ladder, one of the kings of ladder matches. Look at his TLC dates with ads; they never fucking lost one. <laughs> you True. know, they, they, they won, won all, all three of them. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting here, and also big men don't do well in ladder matches like ever. They should because they shouldn't yeah. be in them. Yeah, it's like. You know Hulk Hogan's never been in a ladder match. Can you can you could you imagine his gangly ass in a like a ladder match? <laughs> Dude, he did drop a he leg. Break somebody's the neck. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> he'd break his back. Too. Back, hip. Everybody's dead after that move. Okay, like Hulk Hogan's a big man, <laughs> and no, he's not doing a ladder. I'm not doing a ladder leg spot. Um, but yeah, Christian Cage wins this. Uh, move on. TBS Championship. Again, another title after named after a network. Uh, Jade Cargill, who's still undefeated, by the way. Um, and not as an not as an impressive run as Goldberg. Uh, going up against Taya Valkyrie. Does Taya actually take this off of Jade? Oh yeah. I th- she was in the next T wasn't yes, she? Yeah, she was Frankie Monet for a hot second. Frankie, oh, Miss Frankie, the fucking Frankie dog. She, she, she got, she got done dirty. Yeah, dude. Mrs. Mrs. Um, John Morrison. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're. Uh, oh, you mean Johnny Elite? Um, Is it Johnny Elite now? When he debuted in AEW for like two minutes, <laughs> Johnny Elite. Oh uh, yeah, Jade wins. Look at that fucking picture, dude. Look at those fuck, look at those fucking biceps. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I am a big Jade Cargill fan. I think she's fantastic. God, her and Nyla Rose would have a mean sex. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I, it it comes to a point where Jade Eber just needs to relinquish this belt and move on to bigger and better things like that World Championship, like like WWE or WWE. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Honestly, could you imagine Jade versus Bianca? Oh yeah, imagine that's sexy. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Um, because to be honest with you, if WWE pulled a wild thing, which I don't think they have, because I think Jade's under contract for a good amount of time. But could you imagine Jade dethrones Bianca? Because it would make the logical sense in the world. Because Jade is is just as just as athletic as Bianca is, and kind of would play like the heel Bianca. It just depends. It, it depends how long her contract is with AEW. Yeah, but honestly, they probably signed her to an extension not too long ago. If I would. They're, yeah, they're because if I were her, I would be like, get me out. You're not giving me... And if I were Jade, I'd be like, you're not giving me the women's world title? I'm not even going to get a shot. I'm not even going to be in a storyline for it. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> you're going to put it on Hater? Hater over me. Yeah, I... Look if, at that titty, though. <laughs> like, you're going to put, you're gonna put a Hater and, and everybody on that belt and not me? I, I, I might be out. You know? Uh, but that's just me. But Jade Cargo wins. This might even open up a show because Jade is also really good at entrances during the big events. Remember that one time she came out as like the Hulk? Yeah. Did she still do baddies with her? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Again, another great part of her gimmick, the baddies and the baddie section. She, is a, she markets herself without AEW. She's, she's very smart. Yeah. Very smart, very intelligent woman, and her, she is a sweetheart to meet. Uh, moving on to, again, here's another gimmick, folks. The AEW International Championship will be in a Blackjack Battle Royal. So the Battle Royal this year for Double or Nothing is going to be for the AEW International Championship, formerly known as the All-Atlantic title, <laughs> which I forgot how funny it was when they first they started All-Atlantic. I thought they changed the name. Because <laughs> yeah. they changed it to the International because they probably figured how fucking stupid the All-Atlantic title was. But Orange Cassidy still holds his belt. He's going to put in a battle royal. Does Orange Cassidy come out alive with this belt still intact as the winner? Uh, yeah, unless like someone debuts and they win it, which this is this totally this would, this would, possible with AEW. This would a debut that isn't CM Punk happens. <laughs> okay, well, it'd be like, oh, watch it be Enzo. Oh my God! <laughs> Watch it be Enzo. <laughs> I hope it is Enzo. Just, just, I just again. Do you imagine if Roman wins the tag belts and Enzo wins a belt in, in the, the same, same weekend? weekend? <laughs> Twitter <laughs> wrestling might just cease to exist, dude. I might need to check up on Mance if that happens. <laughs> yeah, and Hulk Hogan wrestles Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> like, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, yeah, I think I think Orange Orange Cassidy continues this reign of a non of a non influential title that they just gave to him because fans like him. Although I will say this, I did see some screenshots of Orange Cassidy in AEW Fight Forever, and he can wrestle and do wrestling moves with his hands in his pants and pin people with his hands in his pants. That's pretty cool. And I would I might buy the game just for that because that's that really is fun. That, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty neat gimmick. Not that is a lie. pretty that is pretty impressive. Uh, so that is all we have for Double or Nothing. Again, gimmicky as all hell, um, which I do think kind of does um, water down some of your bigger matches with all these other gimmick matches. Pacing and match placement are going to be really, really key here because I don't know how they're going to fucking do that. Because AEW, if you watch an AEW event, there's usually carnage in like every match. And yeah. Especially for their for their pay per view events. Uh, with that being said, I think you have it in Vegas. Um, Vegas is usually Spectacle City. I think it's a good place to have it in the MGM Grand. They're going to have a pretty fun weekend, I believe. There's a lot of stuff going on with AEW right now, especially moving towards the summer season with Collision and All In. They got to put on a really, really big event. I think this will be a solid eight, all things considered. Yeah, seven. I don't watch AEW anymore, so <laughs> seven it is. It'll drop to like a five if they if they fuck up the finish, like they have been known to do at major events, like the exploding barbed wire death match, which apparently is which apparently is also a mode in Fight Forever. 
Oh, I can do it right. <laughs> It'll still have crappy explosions. It's just, it's just, it's just Justin Roberts going. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the new Mortal Kombat trailer is fucking amazing. Not the movie, the video game. Fucking phenomenal. Uh, Good job, no gangster. Good job, the Vulpy with his first walk off. By the way, last night. Uh, moving on to our final, final show, which we're going to kind of speed through because we are getting a little bit long in the tooth. NXT Battleground coming from Will's home state of Massachusetts uh, on UMass at the Songa Center, a place that WWE oh, is, has... that, is, it, is it Amherst or is it UMass? I think it's. I don't fucking remember. It's a place where they've been before. It's one of the places where Samoa. I think it's the place where Samoa Joe won the NXT title randomly on like a house show from oh. Finn. Back in Massachusetts before. It looks kind of like a theater setting. Like I said, they've used it plenty of times before. WWE has been there for events before as well. Uh, so it's a pretty it's a pretty, uh, pretty consistent WWE location, NXT, or main roster in and of itself. So we're going to run through some of this stuff because uh, I know a lot of you guys don't always watch NXT. But we are going to go through all the matches. Which actually, it's going to be a pretty entertaining card, all things considered. Uh, of course... We're going to have Carmella Hayes versus Heel Braun Breaker. Fucking finally, Will. Heel Braun Breaker is so fucking exciting. Because um, all he does, he goes out on NXT every week and ruins a match. <laughs> he just goes and spears everybody. <laughs> Hold time. This is Carmelo Hayes' um, hometown or home, home, uh, home state of Massachusetts. Uh, he's the last. Yes, it's a it's UMass Lowell. It's UMass Lowell. Okay. Yeah, dude, it's like it's like probably twenty minutes from New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this is the home location of Carmella Hayes. We're doing a lot of press in the Boston in the greater Boston area, uh, leading up to this. Uh, he's the he's one of the people that we sponsored in this final match before he went to NXT. So I'm happy that he's doing well. Uh, very nice guy. Uh, I I don't know if we're gonna do the hometown curse for him. But it's looking like it. It is looking like it, which is fine. This is the second of their two, the second of their, the second of their bouts. So I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to a three somewhere down the road. I'm very interested to see where this goes. I'm uh, moving on. The NXT Women's title was vacated by Indy Hartwell, who got drafted. Unlike the NXT Women's Tag Champions, who still hold the NXT Tag Titles on SmackDown, by the way. Uh, but the NXT Women's title was vacated. They have a tournament for it. You have Lyra Valkyrie versus Tiffany Stratton, aka Trish Stratus. 2.0 with much more athleticism uh, than Trish. That is going to be a toss-up to crown a completely brand new uh, Women's World Champion because Core Jade got lost and everybody's favorite bubby little 21-year-old Roxanne Perez also lost. But there is a one catch here, Will, with this. There has been a mystery person that comes out in all black the past couple of weeks on NXT and has been taking out a lot of the female talent. Oh, it's me. <laughs> I don't think it's you. Do I take them out to a nice dinner? <laughs> I'm a gentleman. Yeah. And then we go back and we just do anal. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sure that's exactly what the case is. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. This this person in black always keeps on taking people out. So they're, they're, I speculate, because this is also going to be this Sunday at 8 o'clock. So it's going to be count, it, WWE is counter-programming double or nothing. And NXT Battleground is a lot more accessible than Double or Nothing. These are both going to be sat, uh, Sunday night at 8. Both of these events, Double or Nothing and Battleground. But So here's here's my wild, this is absolutely wild left field. Twitter will also explode if this happens. What if the person in black attacking all the female talent? What if it's Tessa Blanchard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. She's back. So okay. She's okay. back to wrestling again, by the way. Dude, here's here's our wrestling threesome. We got uh Roman wing the tag belt. Okay, one. We have what was one AEW? Uh Enzo oh, Enzo, Enzo wins now. Enzo wins the all international title. And then Tessa Blanchard and NXT. Yes, all of it. There's your wrestling threesome, dude. <laughs> all of it. Oh. Listen, if oh. if Roman wins the tag titles on Saturday, will I am texting you and saying one of one, <laughs> one of three yeah, is complete. Yeah, Fournette. It would not be a meltdown. That would be a cum shot. <laughs> <laughs> the word looking for is cum shot. <laughs> Listen, if it's Tessa, Lord Almighty, I'm watching NXT just for the controversy. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! CM Punk coming back, be like, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then Monday night we announce Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold oh, WrestleMania 40. 40. <laughs> oh, 
That is just, you know, that's round two. What am I even going to clean up? What am I going to clean up? That cum truck can stay in the sheets, baby. <laughs> Shout out Manny, by the way. Thank you for joining us, Manny. Uh, moving on in NXT, the North American Championship is going to be Wesley versus Joe Gacy, who is secretly really fucking talented, versus Tyler Bate in a triple threat match, which I'm very excited for. Don't be surprised if Joe Gacy takes that one, because um, Wesley's kind of getting stale, and Tyler Bate, Tyler Bate's still in his mid twenties at this point, which is gross. I, I like that picture of Joe Gacy. Talk about talk about a cum <laughs> like Joe Gacy is. I think an underrated person in NXT. Um, we've seen Joe Gacy when he was part of when he was on Evolve. Yes, we did. Yeah, him and he was part of it. Was him Swerve and Eddie Kingston as the Unwanted? Yes. <laughs> oh my! Oh, Where he was part of the uh, the ECW show, right? The ECW Arena. Yes, I want to say he was. Yeah. Like I think Eddie Kingston cut a promo on Paul Heyman with the, those two behind him. Yeah, it was uh, Shotzi was also in the was in the uh, Evolve show as well. Yes, she 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 flew through a she flew through a fucking thing of chairs and blooded herself up. God, dude, that was such a great show. Was so much. I want. I was. I gotta find it on Peacock if they still have it. That was a really fun show. It's probably. It's gotta be there. Yeah, Ar Fox. Uh, Ar Fox and Leon Ruff were on there. A lot of the evolves are on um, Peacock. Yeah, because WWE owns them or uh, bought yeah. their library. Yeah, I fucking I miss. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep saying. I know I, I miss, miss Evolve so much. <laughs> I just met Andrew Zarian like, bro, I miss Evolve <laughs> <laughs> so much. That was a great way to waste a Saturday afternoon all the time. <laughs> it was not a waste. It was. It was money it was well spent. fucking spent, dude. Those nachos or those fucking burritos, quesadillas. What was you can literally buy a six pack before the event <laughs> in the in the venue. The six pack and like a quesadilla. Mm-hmm. Talk about a wrestling three. And I so. love sitting on that stage. Perfect views. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, sitting on the stage is great. Yeah. Um, he could be like Raven on his own. Hmm, Gage should win this match. So good idea, Manny. I like that idea. Uh, moving on, uh, Tag Team Gallus, those thick boys from NXT UK, is the tag champions, versus those good old boys, the Creed Brothers, who are former amateur wrestlers from Duke, because they look like, they literally look like they went to Duke. Because they went to Duke. <laughs> Which one of the Creed Brothers? Top, the top the, yeah, ones? Yeah, the, 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 the more clean-shaven white guys. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not going to lie. They are actually wildly impressive. I've watched them. So the Creed Brothers have this interesting tag move. So one of them will do a stalling suplex. And then the other one will tag in. And then they'll switch the person and still do a stalling suplex. I, I don't know if they do this or not, but their finishing moves just be called with arms wide open. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? My sacrifice. <laughs> better. Even better. That would be great. Uh, Gallus boys are probably going to win. sacrifice. <laughs> oh, I have to show you a Cody Rhodes um, video that someone did. I hope oh, is is Creed playing with the under no, 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 no. I'm not even gonna I'm not even going to tell you any part of it. I'm just gonna send it to you when we're when we're on the post show. I also have excellent. A... No, 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 no. Creed will be playing on this podcast. <laughs> our buddy Nate got popped for our buddy got buddy Nate got popped for a uh, copyright violation <laughs> from Anchor the other day. Check check the website. Creed uh, email. I forgot to send that to Nate. Oh. They got. That's the first time in my eight years of podcasting, a podcast popped. I've seen, it got popped from music violation. I will definitely check that and let Nate know. Sorry, Nate, you can't, gotta, gotta be more original than that. Um, the NXT Heritage Cup is gonna be on the line for the first time in the States uh, with Noam Dar, who's actually a very good technician. He got a lot better uh, during his time off versus Dragon Lee. This is gonna be fun. I do wanna watch this because I've never actually seen a Heritage Cup match. I know the stipulations are wildly interesting. I'm not gonna go yeah. through all of them right now. Uh, there's WWE has a video package on it. You can look it up. It is going to be a really interesting match. It's going to be, uh, like I said, I've never seen a Heritage Cup match. Uh, I like the fact that it actually kind of has this traveling trophy. <laughs> it's got it makes it a little bit different. Um, <laughs> no way I'm Dar though. Great hair. He does have great there. Yes, Fred's crap you have been using WWE themes. Be be on the lookout for that, so watch out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh oh, Ricky, our first like two hundred episodes might get pulled. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. oh well. I still got him. <laughs> yeah, I like, it's why we have don't make we me. have backups. I'll upload them. We have backups to the backups, folks. There's always backups to the backups. Um so yeah. Her- on SoundCloud. Yeah, on SoundCloud, uh, by the way. And this is probably going to steal the show. Uh Dijak versus Ilya Dragonoff. In uh, in a last man standing match, by the way, 
Nice. Last man standing. One one gimmick. <laughs> yeah, one gimmick. Last man standing match. I think they made Ilya and Dijak sign a hold harmless agreement because they've been trying to kill each other every week. Wait, is that that's Donovan Dijak? That's Donovan Dijak, yeah. Oh, dude, he looks great too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love I love the this look. Mm-hmm. He's like he's he's like kind this. of like a Punisher style person now. I, I go into work like, hey, hey, security, I need a new badge. Take my picture. <laughs> Just <laughs> take it like this. <laughs> uh, Frank Castle. Yeah, yeah he does look like Frank he Castle. He does look like he's, pull, he's pulling the Frank right. Castle, yeah. Uh, yeah, This, I mean, Ilya looks great when he gets his ass beat because he just keeps on fighting for some reason. But I feel like Triple H just goes, hey, uh, nice jacket. <laughs> nice, reminds me of me and O2. Nice jacket, pal. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, well, compared to AEW, there's only one gimmick, and it's this one. Um, so if you want more pure wrestling, so, well, the Heritage Cup is technically a gimmick, but it's also it's like the ROH pure title. There are a specific set of rules for that style of match. In a sense, is it gimmicky? Kinda, but Last Man Standing is complete gimmick. Um, so this should be very very interesting, and that's all we have for NXT Battleground. Um, Again, it's going to be 8 p.m. Sunday night, the same time as AEW, double or nothing. I will say this. If you have Peacock, you're only playing $5 for NXT Battleground at minimum. And AEW, double or nothing is probably going for, like, what, 60 in pay-per-view? Something like that? Yeah, 60 in pay-per-view. I'm just saying, you know, you you pick what you you can. Or you go to movie theaters and watch double or nothing if it's going to be in your local area. Uh, Be it as it may. I actually think this will go probably a solid eight for NXT. They're on the road too, which I'm very happy about. So they're doing they're they're starting to travel again. They did it for uh for we did it in February, and we also were on the road obviously for WrestleMania. But I'm gonna go with a solid eight here. NXT is on its way back. I'm gonna go with sevens across the board. It's a Vegas. It's a it's a wrestling threesome. Every show gets a seven. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. Seven, seven, seven. Nice. Good job there. I win the jackpot. What do I win? More wrestling. More wrestling. <laughs> Your jackpot is you get Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold at WrestleMania. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am a real American <laughs> in Philadelphia. Come on now. Hulk Hogan needs to come out with a giant cape. It's just a declaration of independence. <laughs> and then Nick Cage comes out with a steel chair, hits him in the back, and steals it. <laughs> what do you mean they even dug Sabu? I mean, you t- wait, hold on, Manny. You, yeah, whoa, yeah, man, whoa, wait, wait, wait a second. Manny. Sabu is a part of Double or Nothing. Are you, are you yanking my chain here, Manny? I might, I might have to give you an Un reverse card. I might have to buy it just to watch Sabu botch one more time. Because <laughs> if Sabu, Sabu changes everything. <laughs> okay. Sabu was just on Dynamite. Fuck. Jesus. Fretz, you're supposed to be telling us these. Seriously, things. Fretz. Yeah, you're off the ball today, Fretz. What's going on here? Damn it. <laughs> What's going on here, Fretz? Sabu. So you, you're telling me Grand Mata League debuted on Dynamite tonight as we're recording the show, and Sabu. Next thing you know, Tommy Dream is going to be defending the play line from hell again on Dynamite. <laughs> and, then, and then we have something to talk about. Oh, my God. You guys just really want to piss off Paul Heyman. Because, I mean, come on. We're setting up for... Fretz is... Okay, Fretz, you're playing Zelda. That's... Okay, sort of fair. Like, fair, I, I, Zelda. All right, you get a pass. You get a pass. You're playing Zelda. All right, Fretz. Anywho, NXT Battlegrounds. Probably going to be a solid aid. Zelda is a viable excuse. I, I get it. I've never, I've never played a Zelda game, but I'll let it slide. I get it. I get it. They're saying, like, this Zelda's the greatest Zelda of all time. I understand. I understand. As a video game nut myself, uh, who just got into his second year on the Yankees and MLB The Show this year. <laughs> I get oh, I'm it. I'm still playing 22. I'm still playing MLB The Show 22. Don't I tell you to get 23? Cause I, I thought you were going to get 23 because I had the uh, Negro Leagues mode. Uh, I really I really wanted to, but I was just like, I'm still playing 22. <laughs> Fair. Negro Leagues will probably be in there next year. <laughs> yeah, very, very fair. That's the thing with sports games. I buy them every few years. I can wait till uh, college football's coming back next year. Oh, NCAA? Mm-hmm. The football game? Yeah, because cool. the, uh, they were able, they're going to be compensating the players now. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. They, the, the agreement just passed. The NIL deals just got passed for them. 
That's really so smart. players can opt in to use their name image like yeah. in the video game. That's really smart. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. I'll never buy Madden again if that happens. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, dude, why do you still buy Madden to begin with? <laughs> uh Dynasty mode, and it's it's because college football doesn't have a video game. That's why. Ah, fair that that that's fair pretty. I mean, fo- no, to be to be fair, football games are a lot of fun. Yeah, college football was an amazing experience. That that line. Madden's is such a broken mess of a fucking shitty ass franchise. Because they have no. Because the NFL it made it the exclusive license, and they have no competition. They have, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they. When you have no competition, why would you? Why would, why would you make you it better? Putting something yeah. else. Yeah. Why would you put why something you else? Anyway, good? this is a wrestling podcast, and we need to get out of here so we can talk about Madden and all all that other stuff. And I have a video version of MIB asshole for you, Will. Because I saw it. Video ver- Well, you're not going to see the video, but I'm going to play the audio. But I, we're going to agree pretty wholeheartedly on this. But when I heard it, and when I watched it, when I heard it, I was like, this is so worth it. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's better when we disagree. <laughs> no, no. This, this, no this, this story is worth it all. All right, uh, Manny, stick around with us. We're gonna play Manny yeah, Manny please, Manny, stick around with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, stick around with us. We are going to go to the post show, play Amani Asa. But first, we have to do some outro. So, Will, if you do not mind. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 341, Night of Collisions or Nothing. AEW Collision is going to be a thing. Hopefully, it's Saturday Nitro. Uh, We have a major, major lineup of events in wrestling this Memorial Day weekend. Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m., we have Night of Champions by WWE. Then Sunday night at 8 p.m., you have both NXT Battleground as well as AEW Double or Nothing. And if you actually still watch Impact, we're having an event on Friday night as well. So it's all wrestling all the time this weekend hopefully one of our three predictions will happen and hopefully i really hope it's just enzo i really hope it's just enzo just to ruin aew to be completely honest i don't know with which you. one i want more now yeah right uh you can find me at ambassador biggs across all social media outlets whenever i return b-i-g-z ambassador biggs find kings of the rings podcast at k-o-t-r underscore podcast across all of our social media outlets like share subscribe leave us five star reviews whenever you can and if you end up listening to us make sure you're listening to us wherever you listen to all of your favorite podcasts by subscribing to wrestle Addict radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast and follow wrestle Addict Radio social media at Addict underscore Russell on Twitter and Russell Addict Radio everywhere else. Will Tarashock. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, it's me, it's Willie T. It's this one in the hat. See, it's right here. Willie T. Yeah. You can't see it. He made that in high school, folks. Branding. Branding from an early yeah. age. Yeah, T is in, T is in Thomas. A R A S H U K is last name. It says they're my at symbol. Uh, if you want to follow all my shit to talk my Tarashock podcast, uh, today I dropped an episode with a TikTok. Um, Political TikToker. I went to uh, went to high, went to college with. Interesting. Interesting guy. Follow him. Um, Counterpoints politics on TikTok. He's got sixty thousand followers and millions of views. Good for him. Very very smart, uh, thorough thinker when it comes to politics. Critical of both sides and overall, hell of a guy. Next week I am interviewing the. Fa- Actually, it's gonna be a few weeks because I gotta get my computer back. Uh, the founder of Day One, which is a community of founders and entrepreneurs. So. That's very helpful to both me as a founder and an entrepreneur. So, yeah, support your boy, Talk with Tarashuk, anywhere podcasts can be found. Yes, sir. So when we come back next week, hopefully uh, we will have Kay Murphy. Uh, hopefully uh, we hit our wrestling threesome over the weekend, and we're going to have a lot, a lot to talk about. So sit back, relax, and again, like I said before, move over, LeBron, because you're going to be watching wrestling with us for this entire weekend. Enjoy this weekend of wrestling. Have as much fun as you can. We will see you guys next week. Goodbye, good night, and fuck you, Slack. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.